Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we got the LJ back up on the lift. We took it out for the maiden voyage for the Memorial Weekend to Dresser, Wisconsin. And I was losing rear springs left and right. For whatever reason, Jeep put these upper spring mounts at a weird angle. We tried putting bump stop extension in to kind of keep them in place. So a lot of people have done, you know, a cut and turn with the factory, but we're going to do it the IRO way. So we got new product that we've been working on. We're going to cut out our old ones. We're going to weld in and straighten out our uppers. And we're going to take it one step further. We're going to put in the new IRO bump stop, the hydro bumps that we just came out with. So we're going to have two versions of this. We're going to have one that will utilize a bump stop tube that's threaded or just your standard um, section that will kind of act like a coil retainer uh, with an option of adding like a John's balance in it. So we're going to get this one cut out of here, get it cleaned up. This one's tacked together. So we're going to show you how we're going to do it. There is some adjustability in it. So you have some movement in it. If you're doing a stretch, uh, if you're using a different axle, that has got a different width on the spring pads. So stay tuned. We're going to get this cut off and get tacking. So the way I'm going to cut these out is I'm actually going to cut into the bracket itself. There's no stitch welding underneath here on either side. It's just along the face. So I'm going to cut up and across on both sides and then peel this down. And then I'm going to try and chisel off the actual cup because these back ones that are welded up onto the frame are really hard to get to. So with our design, we don't need to get that flush cut on the inside of the frame rail. We just need to get the arch cleaned and make sure that our bucket, our new one, is going to be flat. So let's get this cut. So I think I'll keep grinding here and get as much of this crap out of my way and then finish cut flush on the back side of the frame rail. It's already starting to tear with how rusted it is. It's all splitting. That was not much. Maybe not. Short the shot. Easy. It's in pretty rough shape. So we got our bracket out of the way. Uh, we're just going to clean up the back side so that our new brackets are flush and there's nothing in the way for our welds. And then we'll get our fronts cleaned up and start tacking together our new brackets. What do you find? Oh, typical TJLJ crap in the Midwest. Chunks of frame. Well, that's a big one. It's it's back to about here. Well, we'll just ignore that for now. So we got our old bracket cut off. We got it cleaned off as far as welds wise. Uh, once we get our new piece tacked together, we'll mark out where we actually have to clean for good welds. We are going to have a new bracket that's going to sit inside of the archway here, so we'll have to get that cleaned up as well. But we're ready to start tacking our new bracket together. Anything else we got to do while we're in here? I don't think so. I think we're going to leave our track bar bracket. We're four links, so I could cut it off, but we're on a time crunch trying to get to a wheeling event this weekend, so something for another time. Maybe if we ever powder coat the frame. <laughs> so we got our driver's side mocked up. Um, this is mocked up. Like I said, I'm doing the hydro. If you're not doing hydro and you just need to relocate and straighten out, you'll get a chunk of tube with a cap that you can throw your, um, your rubber John's bounce bump stop back in, weld it all together. You're good to go. If you're doing the hydro bumps, these are a two inch travel bump stop. So we got two plates on our pad right now. This bottom plate here is essentially the same height as our coil spring plus our spring retainer. And then we're shooting for three inches of bump, tra uh, bump stop travel. So this black plate here is for our one inch gap that we want between our landing pad and the tip of our hydro bump. 
So with the hydro bumps, you're going to get a long tube like this. This one's a little more thread than what you would get. This was our first prototype, but you'll have a one inch thread depth and then six and a half inch tube that you can cut down to whatever you need. Um, this will take a little bit of extra measuring to make sure that you have the adjustability you want and the height that you want for your up travel. Uh, we ended up with, I think, three and a quarter um, from our threaded end up cut, and then that's going to get welded into our top round plate. So just want to show you a mock-up, and then we'll head to the table and kind of show you the slotted pieces that we have that and how it's going to get tacked together before we start cleaning all this up and getting welded in. So we already determined our length. We got our threaded side here, so this is going to fall. But you can see our little line there. We're going to get this cut on our handy dandy ancient uh, bandsaw. And then we'll head over and start tacking stuff. So we got our pipe cut here. So what we're going to do, we're going to set it in. Huh? It's tubing. What did I say? Pipe. Yes. Okay. Cut. All right, so we got our DOM tubing tacked into our round plate. Did you say DOM? DOM, D-O-M, sorry. <laughs> so Dominic Toretto. Hey, DOM. It's family, man. It's family. I don't have friends. I got family. <laughs> so we got our DOM tubing tacked into our round plate. So this is what we're going to be working with from here. This one's a prototype, so it doesn't have any tabs in it. By the time this hits our... YouTube channel and our website, we're going to have tabs in this for our round plate and they're not going to be slot, long slots. They're just going to set in where they're supposed to go. But keep in mind, they look very similar, but there is a long side and a short side. So this will be for the driver or passenger. So just pay attention when you're slotting them in. One side will go one way, one side will go the other way. They will tab in either way. So just Pay attention to that, and then this one is going to slot in and tuck towards the DOM tubing. So it can slide out this way, but we're going to tuck it all the way in from there and get the back one tacked in, and we're going to leave this one loose for now, and we'll show you why. So with the design... It's very hard to weld, you know, in a perfect world, we'd have two sandwich plates sandwiching the entire side of the frame, but with the design, you'd have to pull the tub to do that. Um, not worth it, in my opinion. Uh, it's just as strong. We're going to actually use the inner arch of the frame for a lot of our strengths. So the reason we leave this plate out is once you have this one tacked on, we're going to test fit first. This is going to sit in here and you're going to do a one inch stitch weld on the ends and on the top after you finish weld it you know on the bottom and then we're going to bring our top plate in and then slide that in we got to do a little bit of adjustment here but essentially that's why we want to leave this plate out so that we can weld these in and then finish it with our outer plate <laughs> By the way, when you're welding, do not have your bump, bump stops anywhere near you. Any little bit of slag on there will tear the seals. They'll be junk. So keep them away. But we got that one on. Now we're going to go clean up the inside of the act or, uh, frame rail. And then we're going to get this one welded in and then get our outer plate on. Then we can install these. So we got our plates all mocked up and tacked in here. We threw the bump stop back in. We got the axle at ride height so that we could check our clearances again, make sure it was going to land where we wanted. Everything looks good. So we're going to pull the bump stop back out. We're going to weld in um, our inner gusset, and then we're going to slot our outer plate in and get that welded on. Get our spring back in, get this side all tacked back together because we got to get it rolling out of here because we got another project rolling in. So, time crunch, we're almost there. So, all of our welding is done. We've got it painted and whatnot now. 
I know everybody gives me crap about how I'm not painting everything great, but the plan is hopefully this winter I'm taking the tub off. The frame does need some work, so I'm hoping to get that done this winter. I'm going to get the whole thing powder coated. I'm going to add a couple gussets that I want, so don't pay attention to the paint job, but everything's welded solid. We got our original isolator on there, and we've got our bump stops threaded in. Make sure when you're welding these tubes, if you're doing the bump stops, that you put something in there or cap the top with something so you don't get any spatter in there. We had a couple spatter spots that made it difficult. Had to hit it with a die grinder with a carbide bit. Once above we got the threads. above the threads, yep. Um, but they are tight tolerance, so they can be a pain in the butt. Make sure you anti seize them um, to save yourself later if you ever got to pull them out or readjust them. And then make sure you crank these down good and tight once you got your depth set where you want it. Stay tuned to see if Travis's rear main seal holds up. Stay tuned to see if Travis buries it in the mud again. <laughs> oh, Gilbert, too. That'd be terrible. Yeah. So we got us on a jack stand and down to the ground at ride height right now, just so you can see in here. But, I mean, this spring is, like, so much better than it was. I mean, we had that huge bow in it. Um the way we designed it, you shouldn't lose any ride height or gain any ride height. Our bump stop is centered. Um, we have it offset back just a hair so that we'd have a clean pad to land on instead of the bolt. And we got our one inch gap that we want right there. So I'm very happy with that. Only thing left to do is get this wheel on, get it on the trailer and go wheeling. So stay tuned, check out a wheeling video here pretty quick and see how these operate. We got these on a few of our rigs. We're gonna, we're gonna put them to the test this weekend. So. We're heading up to Gilbert, Minnesota, known as the Iron Range. We're going to beat some stuff up. Thanks for hanging out, and stay tuned. Like and subscribe. Thanks, guys.